The Wairia. Oh, they've got the ball! Back to the middle. It's found in a cello. A long range shot from a He's got it! Oh, what a kick! How the Tigers were eliminated from the 2010 and 2011 final series. Devastating, yes, but supposedly just a blip in what was expected to be a dominant era for the club. The side looks set to become a premiership contender for the next half decade, so how did this potential juggernaut devolve into the laughing stock of the NRL? Here's a look at the disaster 2012 to 2023 era of the West Tigers. The 2011 Tigers side was filled with talent. The Tigers had Benji Marshall, who was an absolute superstar, Robbie Farah, who led the Blues, and studs like Galloway, Ellis, Takiri, Lawrence, and Hyington, who all represented their countries. Whilst Maltzen, Fafida, Dwyer, Woods, and Louis presented one of the best young cores in the competition. They went into the 2012 season as premiership favourites despite the losses of young prodigy Andrew Fafida and club legend Todd Payton. They would welcome big money signing Adam Blair and unearth Marika Corabetti. It was supposed to be their year, but they would fall as low as 15th after going 1-5 and, and then recovered to 4th by round 15, but the Tigers were all over the place. Their form would slump towards the end of the season, with the side finishing in 10th, which saw Tim Sheen's 9-year, 249-game reign as Tigers head coach end as the club looked to restructure for its future. 2013 was really the start of a new era, a transitional period for the Tigers. CEO Stephen Humphreys and Chairman Dave Trodden would announce their hiring of coach Mick Potter. Chris Hyington and Bo Ryan left for Cronulla, whilst the Club Player of the Year between 2010 and 2012, Gareth Ellis, would return to England. A 31-year-old Braith and Astor was named as the Tigers' marquee signing, and a young star by the name of James Tedesco would emerge at fullback. The Tigers would finish the season in 15th, barely avoiding the wooden spoon. And in the space of 24 months, the Tigers went from premiership contenders to entering their rebuilding phase. The core of 2011 had already started to wither, but it was when club legend Benji Marshall would announce his move to rugby union that the transition period had fully begun. It gives me great pleasure to announce that I'll be joining the Auckland Blues next year for the next two seasons. 2014 would be much of the same for the Tigers as they finished in 13th, carrying an extremely poor defensive record. It was the performances of high profile signings of Braith and Nasta and Adam Blair that took the brunt of the criticism. Potter in just his second season would get the sack and the Tigers showed little to no improvement. There were glimmers though, the Tigers spine of Luke Brooks, James Tedesco and Mitchell Moses brought hope for the future. As much as their on-field performances were of concern, it was the off-field management issues that were put to the forefront. See, the West Tigers represent two of Rugby League's foundation clubs, the Western Suburbs Magpies and Balmain Tigers. Both the Tigers and Magpies are interwoven through the history of Rugby League and hold extremely passionate fan bases. The two clubs were essentially forced into merging following the Super League War and founding of the NRL. Neither the Tigers or Magpies held the financial status of a household club like the Broncos or Roosters and knew in order for the club to survive extinction, they would have to form the West Tigers joint venture. This solution was necessary but has had the clubs at odds with each other since its inauguration. Those rumblings came to a head in September 2014 when Balmain, one half of the joint venture, would default on their payments to the West Tigers and were found to be in debt to a sum of almost $5 million to the NRL. The NRL would step in, assembling a board of directors that featured both independently appointed directors and members just from the Magpies side. The West Ashfield Leagues Club, which controls the Magpies side, would assume this debt and help the club move forward into 2015. 2015 saw debut coach Jason Taylor lead the Tigers with Robbie Farah being announced as the captain. Unfortunately for the Tigers, this season proved just as unsuccessful as their last, with the Tigers avoiding the wooden spoon on just point differential. Off-field ownership issues dominated the headlines as yet another CEO in Grant Meyer was dismissed and Justin Pascoe was appointed. The Tigers held strong with Jason Taylor though, despite the poor finish. The 2016 season was an improvement for West, as they managed to settle their debts owed to the NRL, with the Magpies taking 75-25% to split of the club. There was an upturn on their on-field performances as well, with the Tigers finishing in ninth, just one point outside the top eight. Tedesco and Woods in particular started to excel, with the duo featuring for the New South Wales Blues and being named the Dalian Player of the Year in their respective positions during this period. A rift with Farah and coach Taylor would mar any success of the season as the Premiership winner was demoted to reserve grade, signing with the Bunnies for the 2017 season. Taylor would only last three weeks into the 2017 season before his firing. Taylor's tenure can be summed up with these decisions. 
He decided to play Jordan Rankin over a 21-year-old Josh Adokar, and his marquee signing of Matt Ballon, who was recovering from his second ACL injury prior to joining, would only play in three games over two seasons. To make matters worse, a month later, exciting young center Tim Simona would be deregistered by the NRL for betting against his own team. Although instances like Simona can be put down to bad luck for the Tigers, their poor roster decisions since 2011 were inexcusable. Josh Adokar in one season went from a fringe starter to an NRL top try scorer and premiership winner within a year. Andrew Fafita became a representative star and premiership winner. And Marika Korobetti, who was the club's rookie of the year, would become the Storm's top try scorer and a Wallaby superstar. Outside of Chris Lawrence, all remnants of the 2011 side had departed, replaced with a series of dud signings. At least they had their big four though, right? The appointment of Ivan Cleary would be announced early into the 2017 season. The Tigers' slogan for the 2017 season read, On the bus. By mid-season, most Tigers fans are off of it. West Langwich at the bottom of the table all season and eventually finished 14th. That big four that the Tigers' future depended upon was down to one by round 11. With Moses demanding a release of the Eels and Tedesco and Woods announcing moves elsewhere in 2018, their big signing of Jamal Idris in the preseason churned out just three appearances before retiring. The hole left by Farah, two seasons prior, remained unfilled, and with the departure of Woods and Tedesco, it only left Brooks on the roster, who the Tigers managed to secure on a long-term deal. The Tigers were essentially left with nothing to show for their player development, not even a single finals appearance. Woods would leave the club with a very real quote. You want to go out there and just play footy, but there's always something going on that's out of your control. The club's got no stability. If you want to see possibly the worst transfer departures list in a single off-season, this might be it. Yes, that's Ryan Pappenhausen and Jeremy Marshall King, and that doesn't even include Moses who left mid-season. The inability of the Tigers to re-sign much of their young stars would leave them with a significant amount of cap space, which coach Ivan Cleary used to impose his will on the club in the 2018 off-season. A series of big money signings were made by Cleary headlined by Russell Packer, Josh Reynolds, Ben Matalino, Chris McQueen, Moses Embai, and yes, the return and resurrection of the 2005 premiership duo of Robbie Farah and Benji Marshall. Farrow, who joined mid-season, essentially filled the hole he left when he was pushed from the club. Cleary decided on the surprising tactic of selecting five co-captains, which was mocked by many. The message the Cleary signings gave was to win now. By 2018, the Tigers had gone a whole six seasons without even appearing in the finals. The Tigers' major signings were all in their primes and were expected to perform immediately. To start the season, it was going swell. The Tigers sat in fourth place after seven rounds with a 5-2 and two record. They were the best offensive side to this point, only conceding 89 points and looked on track to potentially play finals footy. Like basically everything in this video, any moment of positivity or hope was quickly followed by misery. The Tigers crumbled during the middle of the season and never fully recovered, finishing yet again in ninth. As a whole, those big money signings that were acquired that offseason were for the most part underwhelming. Reynolds and McLean were the biggest disappointments of the bunch, featuring a total of three games between them due to injury. Marshall, who was the lowest paid signing, remarkably was their best at 33 years of age. No doubt, another frustrating season, and it almost became a sick joke that offseason. After months of rumbling about their coach Ivan Cleary leaving to Penrith, it would be confirmed on October the 28th. Ivan Cleary would join his son Nathan at the Panthers, leaving his final two years of his deal at the Tigers. He would leave behind a series of long-term deals for players exiting their primes for new head coach Michael Maguire to inherit. When you thought things just couldn't get any worse, it did. The NRL would slam the Tigers with a $750,000 fine and a $630,000 dent to their 2019 salary cap. CEO Justin Pascoe would be advised he would be deregistered for his role in the releasing of Robbie Farah, who was offered employment if Robbie agreed to leave the club without incident. The Tigers would win an appeal to get the fine halved and salary cap breach of 639,000 split over two seasons and avoided their CEO being deregistered. Remarkably, Pascoe was retained as the CEO by the Tigers after being stood down for six months. To think that would happen for a player that they would bring back anyways is honestly remarkable. The arrival of Michael Maguire was a mixed bag. The Tigers severely hit with injuries across the 2019 season and had little wiggle room in terms of salary cap due to the amount of high salary long-term deals and limited cap due to the breach. This meant Maguire could not bring much quality into the squad and the marquee signings he inherited had minimal impact due to injury. Despite this, the Tigers did battle, led once again by the mid-30s duo of Farron Marshall, they managed to get to round 25, meaning just a win to make the finals. It would be Farrah's retirement game at home at Leichhardt in a winner-takes-all game against the Sharks who occupied 8th. Farrah, who cracked his tibia weeks earlier, was expected to miss the game but made a miracle recovery and was caught upon as a last-minute replacement. The stage was set. If you haven't caught on to things already though, 
things just don't seem to fall away of the Tigers, and for their eighth consecutive season, they would miss the finals after being defeated by the Sharks. West upper management remained unsettled as Lee Hadjipatelis, the third chairman in six months, was announced. Ryan Madison, who was the club's best in 2019, demanded a release just one year after his signing. The Tigers decided that that money was best to be used on the Leilua brothers. To put it short, 2020 was a step backwards. The Tigers finished in 11th, outside of a breakout year for David Norfolk and Harry Grant, who was on loan and would have to return to Melbourne the following year. The year ended on a sour note, with Marshall finding out through the media that he would be not renewed by the Tigers and Chris Lawrence would retire from the sport. Efforts from the fans to reverse the decision via petition would fail as Benji Marsh would be released and the last two members of the 2011 squad exited. The West Tigers would change their ownership structure to a 90% Magpies and 10% Tigers split with the club now in good stead financially. 2021 would replicate past years though as the Tigers once again were poor. The loss to the Cowboys at Leichhardt on Tommy Radonica's memorial game where the players were booed and abused at halftime or the 38-0 loss against the Wooden Spoon Bulldogs in the final round of the season were significant lowlights. Maguire managed to escape the sack at season's end, but the Tigers fell to 13th, a third consecutive season of regression under Maguire, as by mid-2022, he was gone following a 3-10 start to the season. Brett Kamali would take over in a caretaker role, as the Tigers finished with a horrific 1-12 end to the year, winning their first Wooden Spoon in the club's history. The 72-6 battering inflicted by the Roosters was a record-losing margin for the Tigers, and it was seriously rock bottom. Tim Sheens would be reappointed yet again as the 2005 Premiership crew of Marshall and Farrah were back, this time as assistant coaches. A flurry of household signings were made in the 2023 offseason. Premiership winner Api Korosau and representative players John Bateman, Isaiah Papali'i and David Klemmer would all join the club. It was for the first time in a few years that there was genuine optimism around the club and its fans, but by round eight, the optimism had diminished, with the Tigers dead last without a victory. The losing streak extended to 12 when accounting for the previous year. They would finally win their first match after 273 days the following week against the Panthers. A genuine highlight would follow in their 66-18 win over the North Queensland Cowboys at home in Luke Brooks' 200th game, which was arguably the club's biggest highlight in the past decade. But in true Tigers fashion, this was followed by a 74-0 loss in the rematch against that same team, the single biggest defeat in NRL history. Tim Sheens would be dismissed in the final rounds as the Tigers managed to fall to 17th spot below their 16th place finish the previous year because of the expansion club, the Dolphins, winning their second consecutive wooden spoon. Benji Marshall will yet again lead the Tigers, this time as a head coach, in what will be a monumental task to resurrect this broken club. Jareem Buller headlines the young crop of talented youngsters that Benji will have at his disposal in 2024, but it will be whether the Tigers can nurture and retain these players. 2023 in terms of recruitment was a net positive for Wes, giving the club something to build on. Recruitment and retention will be integral for the club's growth. Here is a list of the Tigers' big name signings that have failed. And another list of talented youngsters the West have either developed or signed at a young age that have signed elsewhere during the 2012 to 2023 era. No matter how hard you work at training or the tactics that you employ, no club can excel when their roster management is this poor. This past 12-year run without any finals footy can only be described as dysfunctional. This period has been filled with constant drama, leadership changes and gross mismanagement, which has ruined the club's ability to field a winning side. The West Tigers are based in Rugby League Heartland, established through two foundation clubs and hold one of the most passionate and loyal supporter bases in the competition, with the club entering yet another transitional phase. Just how long will it be till Rugby League's sleeping giant finally emerges? Tigers! Tigers! If you enjoyed this video, press that like button. If you want more Sporting News Australia content, subscribe now. And put down below in the comments what you think the Tigers should do for their future.